Hey everyone, welcome to today's video, or video guide, I think I have a Let's Play coming out today too, where if you read the title, then you know what I'm going to be talking about. How to play a champion. Now, that's obviously a little vague, so what do I mean by that? Well, mostly how to play a champion once you've unlocked Tier 3. Because before Tier 3, there isn't a whole lot to it, you're just trying to get your multi-kills with things like Cleave and Earthshaker, and, you know, maybe acting as sort of an off-tank, especially if you're using a champion that has defensive stance. But one thing that I've sort of picked up a lot talking to other players, whether it's through the Reddit, or the Discord, or just watching some people play through the game on Twitch, is champions definitely seem to be a less popular main damage choice compared to Vanguard's, because they're not as obvious on how to play them as efficiently. Vanguards are super easy and simple. You press hide, you go backstab stuff. This isn't to, you know, bad talk anyone. Vanguards are very good. A lot of people just like them. They're fun to play. If that's how you like to play, awesome. And I know there's plenty of players out there that, you know, really like champions. That's their main damage dealer. So I'm not really going to be saying anything new here that you probably don't know already. But for the players out there curious what people are going on about if they see people talking about, man, yeah, champions are amazing. Hopefully this will be useful for you. When you reach tier 3 with a champion, their potential just skyrockets. We're talking crazy combos you can pull off, being able to just do crazy sweeps of the enemy team. Now, to do this in a way where it's not like, oh, you only did that because, you know, you had... X gear, and I don't have that gear, I'm going to be using all Soul Merchant gear for this. If you're curious which ones, Spirit's Flame Sigil, Winged Avenger Sign, Spire Shard, and Squall the Giant Slayer. If you're curious about which each of these do, more specifically, I'm not really banking on any of these in particular to change how I'm going to play, but you will see them have some effect on it. You can go ahead and just pause it so you can take the time to read it. Now, if you're going to be playing a champion as a potential main damage dealer, these are the four essences I pretty much always go with. Annihilation for extra damage, stability for immunity to knockdown. This can, honestly, is the most flexible. You can swap this out to something else of your own personal taste. Obviously, I don't normally use Spire Shard on a champion, so this, it's, this is kind of redundant for the sake of this video. Essence of Extermination for the AP per kill, and Essence of Crushing for the extra armor break, which is actually very useful for the Chained God season, lots of Fomorians running around. All of this is gear that any player can get access to, 100% certainty if you play through the endgame right now. So all the results you see here is definitely something you will be able to do one for one. Now the skills. What skills basically act as the backbone for later game play for a champion? Like, what is it that distinguishes proper play from improper play? There's sort of three skills and an upgrade on a fourth one that really make the core. The most important ones are going to be damage focus and melee expertise. Damage focus is super important. The, as you'll see in the gameplay, you're going to be passing your turn, your first turn especially, pretty much all the time. And it won't be uncommon for you to pass turns later in combat too. And when you do, this guarantees that you'll get a huge damage bonus on your next turn for each AP that you did not spend. With save strength, this means you'll get extra AP into the next turn, which means way more attacks, extra movement, all of that jazz. And readiness gives you a huge amount of survivability. Tons of armor, you're looking at, you can see here with my Black Knight, he has 10 action points, so he'll get 15 armor. That's double, basically, what he currently has. Melee expertise, the upgrades on this aren't super important, honestly, these three. They're nice bonuses for when you do end up outnumbered, but the main thing here is killing spree. This is the main thing you want. The others are all optional, this is mandatory. When you get a kill, you get an automatic free swing with your basic strike attack at any adjacent enemy. And this chains off itself, so if you get a kill with this free swing, you will get another free swing if there's still stuff adjacent to you. This enables just huge multi-kill potentials with free attacks. 
Now, the third main sort of like pillar to this strategy, the backbone of the champion playstyle, is Rage. This provides a significant stacking damage bonus for every kill you get. So the more kills you get, eventually you're going to be doing such crazy damage you'll be running around one-shotting things. And this really helps your AP efficiency because obviously doing one attack versus two, you'll be saving four AP, you know, on a potential kill. This last upgrade you don't need, but the other three are very important. Extended Rage just brings it up to the 15% instead of 10. Anger Management, so now it lasts three turns instead of two, which will be relevant in some fights. Some fights are just longer because enemies are just super spread out over a large map. And most importantly is Bloodlust. You get an AP back per kill. With the Essence now, that's two AP per kill, so you get at least a 50% refund on most of your attacks. And if you get multi-kills, you can get a full refund. And the last important part here is glory kill. When you get a kill with your strike attack, you reduce cooldowns by one. This isn't as important as the other ones, but it is definitely worth mentioning. You will be getting a lot of strike attacks in, especially because of killing spree, that you'll be reducing your cooldown on all your skills pretty often, whether it's Earthshake or Power Attack, Leap Attack, Defensive Stance, Cleave, whatever it is on the champion that you are running. Now, these are the main core that really enables the champion playstyle. Obviously, the rest of it is just damaging abilities and positioning, and we'll get into positioning with the actual gameplay. I think this is enough of an explanation. I'm using Black Knight in particular on this one, not because of his leap attack, but because he does not have defensive stance. He's one of the champions that doesn't have it. And that's to just sort of show off how much survivability champions can actually get because of the damage-focused talent. They really become major brick walls. Alright, so I'm in the Warlord, level 25 Fomorian mission. I brought in an armor and health potion. I'm not even using a haste potion or a damage potion. This is going to be entirely based off of, you know, the skills. I brought him solo because... You know, bringing allies definitely makes it easier, but I want to show how this works when he's by himself. How he's still completely capable, your champion. So we're going to pass the first turn. Alright. Now, we have a much larger damage bonus. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what each of our skills can do. Alright, can't get a kill here, here... Or like this. So we need to get our rage rolling. So we're just going to start with a basic attack on this one. So now when we do cleave, it kills him, gets the free swing, kills him, another free swing, and weakens him. Now we're going to leap attack. And we're going to do... We're going to move once. We do take two opportunity attacks, but you can see we have so much armor built up from that damage focus. We took one armor point of damage each. We're doing this, so now I'm adjacent to four units instead of two. So now when I use cleave and get this kill here, my killing spree let me get three extra swings for free and get three targets. I spent one movement AP and gained a bunch of regular AP in exchange. Now if I move to here, get the backstab, we can't quite kill him in one, so we'll do one swing, and then a second swing. I'm going to move to here, and I'm actually going to use Earthshaker to get a free swing on him. And now, We'll just pass our turn. So, he tried to move. I got an opportunity attack. Killed him. Procced killing spree. Got a free swing. And that's why he is now injured. So now, one, two. I could have done a power attack to kill him there. That wasn't paying attention to the math, but the burn will finish him. There you go. As you saw there for yourself, we took... 42 points of hit point damage and 3 points of armor damage. 
and he was able to solo that entire encounter. What really made a difference there was making sure that you're always adjacent to as many enemies as possible, so that way when you get a kill, you have as many potential free kills with your killing spree on the next ones. And you saw how the damage was just ramping and ramping, and we started doing just crazy amounts of damage. I'm going to do one more fight, just to kind of show the principles of champion gameplay again. This time, I drank the health potion, so we're going to this fully uh, with full health. Didn't really bother with the armor potion. Um, but, as usual, we're just going to pass our first turn. And since we're immune to stun, we're not really worried about any CC. And the fun thing about damage focus is you can actually pass two turns. After the second turn of passing, you really stop getting get growing benefits. So if you see here, I have, um, what is that, 18 action points. I'm going to pass this turn to boost up again. We're taking no damage. And now this turn I have 23. It won't just can infinitely keep scaling. Eventually you will be better off getting kills, stacking damage that way through rage. So, we're going to open with a cleave. A little bit of bad RNG. We swung onto the taint hog after killing this warg instead of the other warg, which would have been a kill. But that's alright. Now we'll swing on this warg. Alright. Next, we're going to move up. Let's go ahead and Earthshaker. Power attack. Alright, you're dead next turn. I'm actually going to now Leap Attack. Destroy this totem. I'm going to move over this way. Going to do a cleave, so now nice and easy double kill, move up again, going to cleave, another double, leap attack, just going to get that, we're going to move up to here. And we're going to kill this totem, because the totem does count as a kill for our killing spree. And now we're going to have three targets die because of the burns, and we can finish off this Windmaster Champion on the next turn. He tried to move. Okay, he summoned worms, which is even better for us, because now we can leap attack. And I'm going to move around to get a backstab with my power attack. And kill him. So there you go. That's champion gameplay. One of the important parts of it is definitely feeding kills off of the smaller targets as just easy fodder to ramp up your rage damage. Now, there are certain encounters where they won't have a whole bunch of wargs like this that you can maybe feed off of, but... Most of the encounters in the endgame does actually throw a decent amount of fodder at you, so this will work for most encounters. But I am going to cover one more example where I am going into a fight where there's no wargs even, and you'll see how I play champion in that sort of scenario. And you'll see champions still work very, very well. They just become a little more team-dependent, whereas vanguards remain completely, you know, independent, and they can do their things regardless of the situation. Okay, so I'm doing Lord of Plenty, and you can see here, this is a fight where there are no fodder enemies. Nothing that I can use to feed my Black Knight, in this case, to start stacking up Rage. Well, that's okay, because I have a team. That's kind of what they're for. So what I'm going to do here... I'm going to put Thunderstorm... Drop that... I shield. I'm gonna start softening up the. Uh, I'm gonna start softening up the targets. Uh, 
Um, let's pop this. That. Alright. Um, I'm actually gonna back you guys up a bit. Alright, so this one, he's already pretty weak. Let's go ahead and drop a Death Hex here. We're gonna use a Divine Favor. Thunderbolt. Freezing Attack. Alright, so, now we're going to move our Black Knight forward. Can't quite get a one hit, one kill on there, right? So let's move over to Hector. Drop a hit like so. All right, so now we're gonna do a power attack followed by a cleave. Then if we do just another attack here, let's actually send an Earth Shaker over that way. Got the free kill, and there you go. So we got two down, that he's weakened, and we're good to keep moving. All right. Now, this is going to be one of those turns where we just reset. We're going to use guard and no, no point in ice ball. Oh, but we're going to switch back to Ector. Put a blood hex here. Wall of fire. Mm. Fire Blast. Slow. And I'm actually going to pass with Black Knight, let the last of this weakness effect wear off. That was definitely a little bit of a hindrance. You can see now, they summoned fodder for me, so... You can just do this. Um, yeah, leap attack here. Free swings. Can't quite get a kill here, right? So that's where we switch over to Ector. Use Death Hex. Oh, I guess that killed him. <laughs> Whoops. We'll just move to here. We can use Earthshaker. Get a double on that. There you go. Even in fights where they don't start off with a bunch of wargs, if they have spellcasters, they'll summon fodder for you, which is really nice. But you can see, even on that first turn, before, you know, the worms got summoned, we were still able to kill two of them, primarily through our champion, and heavily damage the third one. Now, Admittedly, vanguards are a bit better in those types of situations because they require zero ramp up. They can just kind of go nuts. But this is mostly just to show that champions aren't by any means weak or useless in this situation because the enemies all start with 800 health. If you're using your team right and you're setting up your champion correctly, he'll still be able to get kills. You know, maybe not as much on his first turn. It may take until the next following up turn or until one of their spellcasters summons, summons worms for you. But they are just still completely viable in that situation. And again, as I have mentioned a few times before, there's going to be fodder in most fights, if not at the start through wargs, later on because the spellcasters summon worms. I hope this was useful or helpful to any players out there that were just kind of curious about what's the deal with champions, how do they work, what is it that, you know, people are talking about when they're saying champions kind of go crazy. 
uh, especially in the end game. This is it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.